Hi everyone, I'm David Hamilton, I'm the Kindness Czar for Psychologies magazine and today's video I want to talk a wee bit about how, a, in fact let me start with a question and I've probably given away the answer to this already in the write-up to this video. Uh, so if you quickly read the write-up, you already know what the answer to the question is, but let's pretend that you haven't read it. So if I had to ask you, what is the opposite of stress? What would you say? Now, uh, I suspect you would probably say it's peace or it's calm. I mean, that's what I would normally have said, had I not been aware of, of all the research I'm going to talk about in a minute. But in actual fact, peace and calm and tranquility, these sort of things, these are not the opposite of stress. Those are the absence of stress. Physiologically speaking, the opposite of stress is kindness. In terms of, if you think about what stress is, it's the feelings of stress that produce the physiological effects of stress. So the opposite feeling and the opposite physiological stress effects, believe it or not, are, in, are the feelings induced by kindness and also things like empathy and compassion. So I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute. But one of the first pieces of, of research that pointed us in that direction was a few years ago when uh, psychologists uh, asked a bunch of people through a period of three weeks to keep track of their stress level. So like every day they would fill out a little questionnaire. So on a, on a zero to 10, for example, on a zero to 10 scale, what has been your average level of stress today? So let's say, for example, it was a seven, then their stress score for that day would be seven. Also, at the end of each day, they were asked to, to write down a number score for the number of acts of kindness, approximately, that they have done, whether large or small. So in other words, if, you'd, if you could remember having done, say, four or five or one or, two, or nine even nice things during the day, then that would be your number score for uh, acts of kindness. Now get this, averaged over all of the group, what they found is on days when the number score for acts of kindness were highest, in other words, when there was more kindness, the number score for stress was significantly less. And it went the other way as well. On days when the stress score was higher, the number score for kindness was lower. And you got this, it turned out you had this seesaw effect. As in acts of kindness number score, i.e. as the number of acts of kindness increased, the levels of stress began to decrease. And that actually gave birth to a wee bit more investigation into what's actually going on here. And it turns out that physiologically speaking, kindness is the opposite of stress. I mean, think about it. When you feel stress, it's the feelings of stress, not the circumstance itself, but how you feel while in that set of circumstances, in that situation. It's the feeling that produces a the physiological effects of stress, for example, that produces more elevated levels of adrenaline and cortisol, which we call stress hormones, and, and leads to the, some of the physiological effects. But when you be kind, how does that feel? It's really nice, isn't it? It feels kind of nice and it feels warm. And, and you know, psycho uh, Jonathan Haidt, a psychologist, sociologist, referred to the feeling uh, as a elevation. You, you're in a kindness feels nice and it puts you in a feeling state, or an elevated state. And now if you look at what happens in the body when you're in that state, it's very, very opposite to what happens when you're feeling stressed. For example, when you you feel stressed, one of the things that happens is an ele can, that can happen depending on your level of stress is an increase in blood pressure. But here's the thing. When you be kind and you feel the feelings induced by kindness, rather than producing stress hormones because you're not feeling stressed, you're being kind, so you're feeling the feelings induced by kindness, i.e. elevation and other feelings, then that produces kindness hormones. And there really are such things as kindness hormones. And the term kindness hormones is really to draw a distinction, a comparison, if you will, with, uh, with stress hormones. Uh, so because stress hormones are products of how you feel, we call them kindness hormones because they're products of how you feel when you be kind. Uh, and it turns out that one of the main kindness hormones uh, is called oxytocin. It's one of the female, it's a female reproductive hormone, you know, clearly, but it also has very important roles throughout your cardiovascular system. One of the things that it does is, is it parks on the lining of the arteries 
Uh, I mean, parks, that's a technical term. Uh, but, you know, just like you, like vehicles park in parking bays, the same kind of thing happens in your arteries, but obviously scientists, we don't call it, we don't call them vehicles and parking bays, we call them hormones and receptors. But whenever you hear hormone and receptor, what you're really hearing is vehicle and parking bay. So you be kind and it feels nice and you generate the kindness hormone, oxytocin. It swims around, it drives around and it parks in the lining of your arteries and that leads to a nice, really cool little uh, biological effect where the, the tension in the walls of the arteries releases and it begins, the artery walls go like that. They're less tense and they expand. And as they expand, your heart doesn't have to push quite as hard to get the blood and oxygen through. So what happens is the heart eases off some of its pressure and you get a wee reduction in blood pressure. And how cool is that? So stress can increase blood pressure. Being kind because of how it makes you feel can reduce uh, blood pressure. Another, wee th another opposite, if you will, is most people know that, that stress can suppress immune function. Guess what kindness does? Well, it can elevate immune function. This is often referred to affectionately as the Mother Teresa effect. And it really just came out of a study where scientists had asked volunteers to watch an inspiring video clip of someone being kind. I mean, it doesn't have to be Mother Teresa, obviously. It's just called that Mother Teresa effect because that's when the first study was done. But any clip, for example, whether it's a, a dog, an animal rescue, I, I watch animal rescue videos online all the time, right, all the time. Uh, and, but any other inspiring clips where you see a demonstration of kindness or compassion. And, and what they found is when they watched this clip and, it, and felt the feelings of seeing compassion and kindness, there was an increase in immune function as measured by a... a an antibody, an immune system antibody in the saliva. It's called S-I-G-A. I mean, if you're interested in the name, it's secretory or salivary immunoglobulin A. And it's one of the main, one of the most important antibodies of the immune system. It lines the mucous membranes of the nose, the mouth and back of the throat, etc. So very, very important. And what they found is S-I-G-A levels had shot up for no reason other than how observing Acts of compassion and kindness made them feel. Isn't that amazing? So what I would actually put to you right now is, is rather than always watching the news, or if that makes you feel stressed, or looking at stressful information that makes you feel stressed, find in on your social media channels little videos that, that inspire you, that lift you up. And it's not just they lift you up and feel good, they actually do elevate for a period of time, and really is for, it can be a couple of hours at a time, can just elevate and lift your immune function. It's such a simple little thing. And I just really wanted to pass that on to you because there's so much stressful information around uh, just now. And, and there's, but there's plenty of inspiring uh, stuff. And if you just watch that and allow yourself to be lifted, to be elevated, then there really is this powerful effect on that immune system antibody called SIGA. So that's another one of the, of the opposite effects. Another opposite effect is it's well known that large amounts of stress over a consistent period of time can increase inflammation in the body. Well, guess what kindness does? In particular, compassion. Kindness, compassion, very go hand in hand. Compassion is a feeling. Kindness is the act that you do following that feeling. So they're very, you know, they're like, they're like, Kin, the, the family, kindness and compassion. Well, it turns out that compassion is an anti-inflammatory because it stimulates the caretaking nerve. I mean, the caretaking nerve, otherwise known as the vagus nerve, we have the caretaking, it's called the caretaking nerve often, or the nerve of compassion even, because relatively speaking, human infants are born premature compared to the young of many other animal species. And that's because human head size compared to the rest of the body is larger in comparison with the rest of the body as infants than it is with other animal species. You might have noticed that puppies will get up and walk about within a day, baby elephants and deer, they'll be up and walking about. But human babies need months and months and months of care. So over these months of care, uh, humans had to really, the only way for our species to survive is if parents care for their young. 
Uh, and so because humans had these bigger head to body size ratios compared to other animals, mothers and fathers had to care and tend for their young for a significant portion of time. So over vast amounts of generations, millions of years, part of our, the human nervous system responded to these consistent feelings. And so part of the nervous system grew to be correlated with feelings of compassion and kindness. So what we have now is the, the caretaking nerve, otherwise the vagus nerve, that kicks in or, or is stimulated when you feel compassion or the feelings induced by kindness. And one of the things that it does, it controls something called the inflammatory reflex. And that really just means that it, it causes inflammation to come down. Basically, so research it showed, got a bunch of volunteers to practice a, a compassion-based meditation. It was the loving-kindness meditation, or Metta Bhavana, that many of you will, will know as, as the, 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 the true name of the loving-kindness meditation. Where you think, you think of people in your life and yourself and you, you think, may you be happy, may you be well, may you be safe. May you be at peace. And you wish that sentiment onto loads and loads of people in your life, including yourself. And researchers found that when people did that over a period of, of six weeks, then the overall levels of inflammation in response to a stressful situation were markedly reduced. In other words, the, the consistent experience of compassion and kindness had led to an anti-inflammatory effect. So there you go. So, so you already we can see some of the different ways that being kind, it can produce, that kindness is the opposite of stress. So just like stress can even make us feel agitated, kindness and compassion can make us feel calm. Uh, stress can increase blood pressure, kindness and compassion can decrease blood pressure. Stress can reduce Im immune function, kindness and compassion can boost Im immune function and therefore uh, uh, help, to serve, help to better support the immune system as it deals with every, with, with you know, stresses and, and, and threats. And then we have stress can cause an increase in inflammation and kindness can produce a, a decrease in inflammation. Now, there's actually lots, many, many more uh, things that you can do. But, I, you know, so there's many more ways that kindness is the opposite of stress. But I, I really, if, if you're interested in reading, I, I'm, I'm not really one for plugging my own books, but The Five Side Effects of Kindness and The Little Book of Kindness are both my books on, on the subject of kindness. And, and they're both, they both talk about this equal and opposite uh, effect. I, I'm not meaning to plug my books. I'm just, it's the only books that I know that cover all of the, the research into kindness and compassion. Uh, I'm not really a big salesman, really. I'm not really trying to sell my own books. I'm really just pointing you in the right direction if you want to read more of that that kind of stuff. I would never make a salesman, would I? I mean, I could never, ever sell stuff, really. It's not my forte. But anyway, uh, what was I talking about there? Yeah, yeah. So opposite effects of kindness and compassion. I, I want to give you, a, suggest a couple of little practices. The first one is seek out today. Seek out inspiring clips on social media that lift you demonstrations of kindness, compassion, look at animal rescue videos. I, 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 on YouTube, I watch Animal Aid India. Uh, also on, on Instagram, there's also the Dodo, which has lots of animal rescue videos, if you're an animal lover like me. But there's lots of inspiring content. But, but, uh, the, 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 the man, Captain Tom, Tom Moore, that just turned 100 today, I mean, wasn't that extraordinary? Uh, what he was doing. And that other one, the, the girl, I don't know if you remember, the girl who was a carer for this elderly gent uh, who had lost his wife a few years earlier. And she came in and she'd got his, his wife's face embroidered into the cushion. And he looked at the cushion and he burst out crying. And I think everyone was moved just watching that, that video. So, uh, so things like that, whatever you can find, just allow yourself to be to be absorbed or immersed in little positive clips that lift you. And I'm saying this because it generates the opposite physiological conditions uh, from stress. Another little practice I'd like to suggest to you is you've heard of mindfulness, yeah? So how about you try kindfulness? Let me explain. And this is another one of the opposite effects. Right? We know that stress, if you were to look at brain scans over a period of time, what you would see is stress has a net effect of reducing the number of neural connections behind the eyes, but predominantly on the left-hand side. Now, the left-hand side is a side 
uh, more associated with the experience of positive emotion and happiness and joy. Right? And, and so long studies show that people who experience more stress tend to have less connections on the left hand side of this front part of the brain above the eyes called the prefrontal cortex. Now, mindfulness, meditation, as, as we know, my, one of the things that mindfulness does is it builds this front part of the brain like a muscle. I mean, it's, it's really it's like muscle growth. If you were to exercise a muscle, two things happen. As you'll notice, the muscle becomes firmer and the muscle also becomes larger. And that muscle, the firmness is increasing in number of, in number of, mu of muscle fibres and the largeness is as they all pack together, you get a larger muscle. So in the brain, you get exactly the same phenomena when you work out a muscle. Obviously, they don't call it muscle growth in the brain because you wouldn't really get funding if you called it that kind of thing for research. So the fancy name for it is neuroplasticity. So in the brain, neuroplasticity is a bit like muscle growth. If you work out a region of the brain, it grows like a muscle. So if you work out that frontal, prefrontal cortex region behind and above the eyes, then it also grows like a muscle neuroplasticity. Lots of research shows that it really does grow like a muscle and, and it literally offsets some of the natural loss you get as you age. So phenomenal. But here's where kind, kindfulness comes in. Because mindfulness, simply speaking, if you've never tried it, I'm assuming you probably have, but let's pretend you hadn't, then here's Mindfulness 101. You simply breathe and you notice that breathing is what you're doing right now. So I hope, I mean, I hope you breathe most of the time. But let's say you were to breathe and then notice that breathing is what you're doing right now. So I was to breathe and go and notice that I'm breathing. Then what am I doing? I'm becoming mindful of the fact that I'm breathing. So I'm now practicing mindfulness. I am mindful of the fact that I'm breathing. So as I breathe and notice that I'm breathing, I'm becoming mindful of the fact I'm breathing, it turns out that the mindfulness, the noticing part of the brain is the prefrontal cortex behind and above the eyes. So when you become mindful of the fact that you're breathing, you work out this part of the brain behind and above the eyes. So it literally grows like a muscle, neuroplasticity. Here's where kindfulness comes in. It turns out that if you were to do mindfulness, notice that you're breathing, and then after a period of time, Let's say you were to allow your mind to drift onto thinking of people that you care about in your life. Could be loved ones, family members, friends, co-workers, people in different households. And just spend a few moments on each person thinking about reasons why you appreciate that person being in your life. It could be thinking of things that they've done, things that they've said to you, ways in which they've made you feel that are nice. And just go from person to person, a couple of minutes per person, and just entertain nice thoughts about these people. Well, it turns out when you do that type of thing, then not only do we grow the prefrontal cortex like a muscle, but we do it preferentially on the left-hand side. And that was demonstrated through research on what I mentioned earlier, the, the Tibetan Buddhist loving-kindness meditation or, or metta bhavna, this type of suggestion, meditation I'm suggesting is very similar because it's the sentiment itself, not the words, but the sentiment that causes the building of the prefrontal cortex uh, on the left-hand side. So, so simply doing mindfulness, but then turning it into kindfulness. So we focus on your breath, not become mindful of the fact that you're breathing for, let's say, let's say four or five minutes or two or three minutes if you've not practiced it much before, and then just think of people in your life that you care about and just think reasons why you appreciate each person being in your life. As I said, it could be things that they've done. You could remember back to things they've done for you, things they've said, ways they've made you feel, anything at all that's nice, that makes you feel nice regarding each person. And as you do that, if you were to stick onto your brain a portable brain scanner, which we tend not to have technology for right now, but let's say we had, the, and then put it into your phone screen or your laptop screen, what you would actually see is a physical change like muscle growth on in the prefrontal cortex, but preferentially on the left-hand side. Now, what did I say about opposite of stress? One of the things that stress does is that the net effect is less muscle growth on the left-hand side of the prefrontal cortex. So where stress has a net effect of reducing the connections 
uh, the growth on the left hand side of the prefrontal cortex, kindness and compassion increase it. So there's another one of your opposite effects. So anyway, I, I'm just about out of time for this little Facebook Live uh, today. I hope you've, you've got a wee bit out of this today. Uh, remember, just uh, populate your social media feed as much as you can today and over the coming weeks with inspiring content, stuff that, that moves you. Demonstrations of compassion and kindness, whether to human beings or to dogs, uh, rabbits, cats, horses, insects, whatever, anything that moves you particularly, which might be different from what moves someone else, but anything that uplifts you and inspires you, it ha can it cause an elevation in immune function in the opposite way that things that stress you can cause a decrease in immune function. There's lots of more fancy things that also happen at the same time. Uh, when you do that but as I say in a very short 20 minute video I don't really have much time to focus on that at the moment but trust me kindness really is a beautiful thing not only for the people that you do it for but it also has amazing biological effects inside your own body so wherever you are in the world at the moment uh, stay home stay safe and be kind and I'm David Hamilton kindness are for psychologies magazine have a good one bye for now